You've just been asked to trip sit for someone and you should consider yourself lucky because being a trip sitter is no small honor. As a trip sitter, you are going to be in complete control of whether or not this person has a beneficial and positive tripping experience and actually enjoys their time on their psychedelic of choice. While it is helpful to have experience taking psychedelics yourself, it is by no means necessary and this very short guide that I have set up for you will help you understand how to be the best trip sitter that you can whether or not you have experience with psychedelics. And before we get into things, I have to say that I do not condone or encourage the consumption of any scheduled substance. This video exists purely for education and harm reduction purposes. With that said, let's get into it. So my first tip for being a good trip sitter is to let the person who is tripping have the trip experience. Don't try and drag them back to reality with conversation, with taking them places, or you know any other number of things that you might come up with to try and relate to them on a sober level. You're not there to relate to them, you're there to keep them safe, and if they start having a bad time, you're there to make, you know, guide them towards having a positive experience. So keep them out of harm's way, but let them fully enjoy the trip, you know, as much as they possibly can without being a danger to themselves. Point number two is to be mindful of the environment that you are creating, both the social and the physical environment, because as a trip sitter, this is where your job really lies, is in cultivating the setting that the person who is tripping is going to be interacting with. Now, this is quite literally everything. The light of the environment, the temperature of the environment, how cozy it is, so you don't wanna be in you know a cobblestone basement, um, whether or not there's music on, what type of music is on, and a whole slew of things that make up the environment that that person is in. Now, some general rules of thumbs are obviously comfortable environments. You want somewhere safe that they're probably familiar with, or at least relatively familiar with. You want somewhere warm because no one likes to be cold and no one likes to be hot. So just a nice, comfortable, warm environment. Light is good unless the person who's tripping decides they want to be in the dark, in which case shut the lights off. And music. Music is such a nice pair with psychedelics, but you want to pick your music carefully. My rule of thumb is go with instrumental music because the lyrics in songs can have a drastic effect on the trip that the person is experiencing. I mean, during my last trip, I listened to the song The Funeral by Band of Horses, which if you aren't familiar with, it sounds a little something like this. So the lyrics in that song are talking about a literal funeral while I am on mushrooms. So I start thinking about not only my own death, but the death of all humans. And it was, I'm not gonna go into too much detail about it, but yeah, it had a severe impact on my trip. So pick your music carefully and pick your environment equally carefully. So point number three kind of stems from the first point I talked about, but I thought it was important enough to call out on its own. And that is to be validating the person who is tripping. Their trip experience is going to be so vastly different from your sober experience of the exact same environment that the things that they might be saying or the ways that they might be acting could seem strange to you or abnormal or whatever word you wanna throw at it. And that's because the is. This person is not in a sober mind state. They are in a vastly different world than you are despite them being sat right next to you. So if they say things that are kinda of weird or they wanna dance around to no music or act weird, let them and encourage that behavior so long as it isn't going to be potentially harmful to them or if there are others around. Anything that they say or do that isn't negative, encourage it. And if it is negative and you start to get the hint that maybe their trip is going south, that means it's time to change the setting. And changing the setting can be something as simple as change the music that's on, taking the person who's tripping from a sitting to a standing position. You could turn the lights on or off depending on what they were. You could even move them to a warmer or a colder environment. Or if you're in a house, take them completely outside of the house. Or if you're outside of a house, bring them into the house. You know, simple changes that can very drastically affect whether or not the person is enjoying their trip. 
So don't think about it too hard, but you might have to experiment a little bit if you're, you're really going to be making the, the most impactful changes that you can, assuming your person is having a bad time. If they're having a good time, don't worry about it. Leave the environment the exact way that it is currently. Which brings me to my fourth point. So I said this at the beginning of the video and I'm gonna say it again. I do not encourage or condone the consumption of any scheduled substance. And with that being said, in my experience, it can be helpful to have had an experience with psychedelics on your own. That way you know what the person who you are sitting for is going through. And it can be even better to have taken some psychedelics Okay, where was I? Um, oh yeah, so while I don't encourage this and I'm not saying that you should do this, what I am saying is that from my own personal experience, it can be helpful to also be on psychedelics as a trip sitter. Now, obviously there's some caveats to this. The first one being, don't take a bunch. Just a small amount so that way you're in a similar mind state to the person whom you are sitting for and you can more kind of intelligently take in the environment that you're creating and know what needs to change about it in order to keep their trip positive. Now, the second thing to this is also, if you have no experience with psychedelics and you are being a trip sitter, don't take psychedelics at the same time that the person you are sitting for is taking psychedelics because then you're both not gonna be in control and that could very quickly spiral out of control and give you both a bad experience, which, isn't what we're here for. So the last point that I wanna close out with is that you need to not only know yourself and your own limits, but you need to know the person whom you are actually sitting for. Because if it's a total stranger to you, then you're not going to be able to pick up on the subtle cues that they'll give off during their trip that can inform you as to whether or not their trip is going south. Because just cause someone's having a bad time doesn't mean that they're going to tell you they're having a bad time. They could just go quiet and be hating it or they could go quiet and be loving it. And if you aren't familiar with that person, you're not going to know what quiet means for them. Also know your own limits, because if you can't handle someone who's under the influence of psychedelics, well, then you definitely shouldn't be sitting for someone who's going to be taking psychedelics. That's just one plus one equals two type stuff. So this is honestly probably one of the most important points that was a fucked up sentence. At least it sounded fucked up to me. At any rate, because if you don't know what you can handle and you don't know much about the person you're sitting for, then you probably shouldn't be sitting for them and tell them that they need to find someone who, who can more effectively trip sit for them. That's all I have. I hope this guide helped you or at least gave you some insight into the world of trip sitting. Obviously, there's a lot more that I could go over, but I'm going to ask you all to tell me what you want. At any rate, I will see you in the next one. Peace.